John chapter number 2 tonight. A familiar passage of Scripture. There's something I want to look at in it tonight, but let's begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, In the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. When they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now, and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine unto now. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee, and manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the privilege of being in the house of God. Thank you for being a good God. We certainly thank you for Calvary. We're thankful, Lord, some 2,000 years ago, you carried your cross up uh, Calvary's hill, and you yielded yourself, and you was nailed to that cross, suspended between heaven and earth, emptied yourself of your life's blood for our propitiation. Lord, you was buried and rose again according to the Scriptures on the third day, making a way of salvation for sinners to be saved. And Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, we're thankful we can come tonight and celebrate the goodness of God. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for what you've done in our hearts and our lives. Lord, we do pray for those that are working with the children. God, you'd bless their efforts. Thank you, Lord, as those children get to celebrate tonight from a hard work, a hard year of uh, learning Scripture and Master Clubs. And, Lord, we're thankful for what you've done in the hearts of our young people. Thank you for those that are working with our teens. Uh, Lord, we pray you'd bless their efforts. Lord, you know the peer pressure that teenagers face this day and age. And, God, I pray that, Lord, they'd hide the Word of God in their heart, that they might not sin against Thee. And I pray you'd put a hedge begin, uh, around every one of those young persons back there. Father, I certainly do thank you for these that are here tonight. I pray that, Lord, you'd bless uh, your people. You'd edify them, encourage them in the good things of God. We pray for that one that might be struggling, that you'd strengthen them. That one that, Lord, is seeking, that they would find the answers they're seeking. Uh, we certainly pray if there be any in, the, in our midst tonight that are strangers to the grace of God, they've never been saved, we pray that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, we pray that you'd be glorified and magnified. And God, we certainly pray you'd use this unworthy vessel now. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, you'd bring my remembrance those things that uh, you laid on my heart, and God, may uh, it certainly help your people tonight. Bless now as only you can. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done. For it's in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Look at several things in this text as a way of introduction. We find in verses 1 and 2 that there is a marriage. We find that in this day and age, a marriage is an event. Uh, and we find that uh, uh, the mother of Jesus was invited, and Jesus and his disciples uh, were invited to the marriage. Uh, I'm glad there's going to be a wedding one day. Uh, I've already secured my invitation. Uh, I'm glad the Bible says, Blessed are they uh, uh, that are called into the marriage uh, supper of the Lamb. And there's coming a day when the Lord Jesus is going to marry his, his church. Uh, what a day that's going to be. Uh, can I say that every marriage on this side of heaven uh, is just a picture of what the relationship between the church and the Lord Jesus uh, is to be. Uh, and uh, what a day. It's going to be when the church uh, and the Lord Jesus are united forevermore. We see a marriage, uh, but we also see there's a messy situation. Look at verse number 3. 
And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto them, They have no wine. It's a messy situation. I just told you that a marriage was an event in that day. There's still an event in this day. There are some people that lose their minds over what they spend for a wedding. I'm thinking, that's a down payment for a house. Hmm? I'm thinking, that is one great honeymoon you're spending on this wedding, huh? Seth, you got a year. Here, listen to me. <laughs> Go to Vegas and let Elvis marry you. It's a lot cheaper, okay? Huh? Huh? But at this wedding, this event, this event that is the event of Cana for this time. They've run out of wine. Now, uh, I know we're amongst Bible believers. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but let me help you something. When it's mentioning wine here, it is not mentioning Mogan and David that you can go get at Kroger's. It's not talking about an alcoholic beverage. It is talking about the fruit of the vine. It is talking about what we know as grape juice, okay? It wasn't fermented. But we find later on that uh, uh, the governor says, hey, a lot of people put out that uh, fermented stuff later on and get people drunk. He said, but you've saved the best for last. Why was it the best? Because it was grape juice. It was not alcoholic. It was not intoxicating. Now listen. I didn't want to spend all this time on this, Don. Why are you helping me here, huh? Listen, they didn't have Coca-Cola. They didn't have Pepsi-Cola. They didn't have milk unless it came from a goat, most likely. Uh, the water that they had most of the time wasn't fit to drink. What they drank was grape juice, hmm? all right? That was a commodity. That was something that was wonderful. And the messy situation is they don't have that. They got a big crowd and nobody's thirst is going to be quenched. They are in the desert, by the way. It is important to have something that's going to quench people's thirst. Notice the minding in verse number 4. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Now look at verse 5. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Now, can I say there's a lot of people that worship Mary and put a lot of stock in Mary. This is the only commandment Mary ever gives. And what Mary says is, whatsoever Jesus saith, do it. Hmm? Can I say that's still a great commandment today? Hmm? Uh, Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, whatsoever he says, we better do. Hmm? Uh, in verses 7 through 9, we find the miracle. Jesus saith unto them, verse 7, fill, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. Now we see the miracle here. The miracle is Jesus turns water into wine. And then we see the message. The message in verse number 10. And he saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set, does set forth good wine. And when the men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. So what is the real message of this whole story? Jesus wouldn't serve alcohol. That's the whole message of this passage now I'm interested in verse number 6 tonight the Bible says and there was set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece a firkins about nine gallons so there's anywhere from 18 to 27 gallons of water in each one of these water pots now notice if you will the place Verse 6 says, and there. And there, at Canaan Galilee, there was a place where there was six water pots. And my dear friends, if you can't go back to the place where you met the Lord, you never met Him. Hmm? Can I say these water pots were just sitting there being water pots? They had no idea Jesus was coming by their way. But there they were. And Jesus came by and needed those water pots. Huh? There was a place. 
And can I say, I don't know about you, but the third Saturday night of March in 1974, yes, 49 years ago, there was a place and an old-fashioned altar uh, where I met the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, now, there's a lot of things, Miss Noreen, I can't remember. Uh, matter of fact, there's some days I don't even remember my name. I mean, there's so much going on in my head, there's a lot of things I don't remember. Uh, it's a blessing. Brother Cisco come in and said, I'm Rob Cisco. I remembered his name. Now, I didn't remember where I remembered his name, but I remembered his name. But I don't remember everything, Brother Bob. You probably do, but I don't. Uh, but I can tell you what, there's one thing I've never forgotten. It's the place uh, where I met the Lord. Uh, when I passed from death unto life, when I became a new creature in Christ Jesus. Uh, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Uh, uh, former things are, uh, are uh, 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 former things are uh, uh, old. And, uh, I'm just messing up the verse. i got to go read it because I forgot. I told you I don't remember everything. Uh, but uh, 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 Second Corinthians tells us, or First Corinthians tells us, uh, I'll get there, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I got to read it because I'm not going to let the devil get the victory. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Uh, 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 what, what happened, preacher? Uh, I went to an altar lost without God, a sinner. Uh, I went to the altar uh, on my way to hell. Uh, but when I got to the altar and I called on the Lord uh, and I believed on the Lord uh, and I put my faith in Him, uh, that night He saved me and He changed me. Uh, I went to Him a sinner but I left a saint of God what a blessing uh, we see and there we find a place I want you to notice if you will the particulars look what it says and there was set there there's a second there the first there is the place the second there is the particulars the factors the circumstances I don't know what factors or circumstances was in your life uh, when you met the Lord. But I guarantee you, some, the Lord had put somebody in your way. Somebody had shared the gospel. Somebody had uh, 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 told you about the Lord. Uh, and your life might have been turned upside down. I mean, you might have been sitting on a church pew like you did every Sunday uh, uh, since you can remember. But you might have been the worst sinner there was. Uh, uh, you might have, Your life might have been a mess. Uh, and you knew you needed a change. Uh, I don't know the circumstances of your life. I don't know the factors that were going on in your life. Uh, but Jesus did. Uh, and at the right place uh, and in the midst of all your circumstances and factors uh, in your their place uh, he showed up and he changed your life uh, we see the place we see the particulars mm, can I say this notice the pots look what it says verse 6 and there was set there six water pots of stone now notice there are six water pots I don't believe in accidents or chances or circumstances. I believe in the providential will of God. You say, what does that mean? I believe there's no accident with God. Amen. Uh, it's no accident that on Wednesday night I preached on 1 Corinthians 14 and I got a little bit on tongues and explained what biblical tongues are and all of a sudden this morning in the men's jail service a guy had a question and asked Brother Brian about tongues. You say, well, that was just a, a, a coincidence. No. The Lord made certain he knew what he needed to know so that guy could get the answer to his question. Can I say it said there are six water pots, not seven, not five, six. Do you know six in the Bible is the number of man? Hmm? Amen. Can I say there were six of them? Jesus didn't come to save the dogs and cats and the giraffes and all the, the fish in the sea. He didn't come to save. He didn't come to save the flowers. He certainly didn't come to save the trees or the owls in the trees. Are you listening? Jesus came seeking to save that which was lost. He came seeking man. And can I say this? They were water pots of stone. Can I say, Jesus usually don't come to the folks that got tender hearts. It seems like he's got to break down these old stony hearts. Uh, in order to do a work in our lives. Uh, so there's six water pots of stone. But then notice the purifying. It says, after the manner of purifying, of the purifying of the Jews. You know why those water pots were there initially? Now they're empty. But those water pots were present. Can you imagine how much a water pot of stone weighs that holds 
27 gallons of water. Uh, you didn't take your back and not mine to move them, all right? Those water pots were setting aside. They were better known, Miss Mar Marcy, as wash pots. You see, the Jews wouldn't eat or drink anything unless they had cleansed their hands. Matter of fact, that was one of the indictments later on they had against Jesus that he ate with sinners and publicans and he didn't do all their purifying. He, he wasn't kosher, if you would. He wouldn't go in and wash his head because they didn't have wash pots. They had wash pots in abundance. These just have to be empty where they'd come and they'd wash their filthy, nasty hands in them and then go on into the feast. Well, Jesus tells the servants, fill up these wash pots. Now, these guys know that this is a filthy thing. About the only thing more filthy would be a urinal. And here's this wash pot with nasty water in it. And Jesus says, draw out and give to the governor. That's why it said the servants knew what was in them wash pots. And they drew it out. And the governor says, this is the best thing I put in my mouth all day. Are you starting to see the miracle? Jesus took the base things to confound the wise. He took something that was nasty and filthy uh, and uh, uh, something that nobody else would care about uh, and he changes the whole feast and that's his first miracle. I'm interested where it says, and there we're set there. I don't preach on this little thought. I'm not going to preach on that. I just want to preach on there you were. There you were. Huh? I don't know about you. But I was minding my own business. I didn't go to church for looking for God that night. Uh, my granddaddy was the preacher, and I went to church because that's what we always did. And it, it's only by the grace of God I probably didn't have my pocket knife in my pocket, or I might have been carving my initials in the pew. I had been known to do that. I had been, uh, 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 let's just say, chastised more than a time or two for things I did with that pocket knife in church. You're glad you didn't know Paul. He'd have straightened you out, son. Are you listening? But I'm here to tell you, I wasn't looking for God. I was just there. But I'm glad he came looking for me. Huh? There you were. Huh? You was just on the job, like you always did. Didn't really know that Brother Stephen was going to come share the gospel. You There you were. But he introduced you to the one that would change your life forevermore. Are you? Oh, what a blessing. Uh, just there you were. That's what these were. There were over those water pots. There they were. Uh, 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 nothing significant. Uh, nothing amazing. Nothing wonderful. Uh, nobody else paid them any attention, but Jesus did. Uh, can I say something about these wash pots? Uh, can I say, first of all, they were void, they were empty. What good was a wash pot if it's empty? You can't wash your hands in an empty wash pot. They were empty. Uh, they existed, but they were unused. Uh, I don't know about you, but before I got saved, I was empty. Uh, I was alive, uh, but I was in dead in trespasses and sins. Uh, I was of no use to God. Uh, uh, but here He came, uh, and He came to where I was. Uh, I mean, I, my life was void concerning God. I was in enmity with God. Uh, I, I, I don't know why God looked my way, uh, uh, Brother Ed. I don't know why He cared for me. Uh, uh, but he did, and I'm glad he did. Uh, hey, can I say tonight, my life's not void because of what Jesus did in me. Amen. Can I say, these wash pots were void. But can I say this, these wash pots were valuable. You say, preacher, they're just wash pots of stone. Why are they valuable? Well, can I say, they didn't mean much to others. But they meant something to Jesus. And can I say the world looks at us, we don't mean much to the world. Matter of fact, that uh, they say we're non-essential. We don't even really matter. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, I don't know about you, uh, 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 but Andy Bashir, the governor of the wonderful state of Kentucky, has never called me to ask me about anything. Uh, I, I, mean, I am uh, 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 at best a thorn in his side. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, uh, the mayor of Florence has never called uh, and asked how our church stood on anything. Uh, 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 I do know the chief of police, not for a bad reason, all right? I do know him. Uh, I do know the sheriff of Boone County. Uh, 
uh, uh, but can I say most uh, uh, people of stature really don't care about me uh, can I say most people that are normal people don't care about me uh, 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 even the people about, at Walmart don't care about me uh, 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 they just don't think much of me uh, but can I say uh, Jesus thought so much of me uh, he left Calvary uh, and he went and he laid his life down uh, and paid for my sin uh, I don't mean much to this world uh, but God bankrupt heaven in order to pay for my sin uh, hey uh, I sure am valuable to him uh, he said what profit a man uh, if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul uh, Jesus said I'm so valuable I'm worth more than all the world and all of heaven because he turned his back on all of it to save my never dying soul these watch pots were void but they were valuable can I say that these wash pots became vested this empty vile dirty stone wash pot became filled it became filled it was found to be worth something can I say my life was empty it was aimless uh, but when I met the master uh, he filled me with his presence uh, the spirit of God took up his abode in me uh, and then he started filling me with his word uh, filling me with the goodness of heaven uh, he and uh, me who was once outside uh, and was not in on the things of God uh, me who was worthless uh, now I have worth uh, now I'm vested uh, now uh, I've been made a joint heir to the throne of Christ uh, now everything he owns I own uh, hey because of the work he did in me uh, and what he put in me uh, I have found worth to him uh, I'm just an instrument in his hand uh, and you're an instrument in his hand uh, and we're written epistles known and read of all men uh, and God uses nobodies like us uh, I'd impact other people's lives uh, you say they're just a filthy wash pot uh, yeah but little as much when God's in it uh, and greater is he that is in you uh, than he that's in the world uh, and I'm glad I got vested uh, I'm glad God put something in me uh, that'll last for all eternity Amen. you know this world thinks uh, live for Friday and, and party all weekend and come Monday they don't even remember what they did all weekend but can I say everything that God's put in me it's eternal Amen. and it'll last forever can I say those wash pots became vested there you were just minding your business God showed up and God changed you and filled you and made you worth something I say blessed be the name of the Lord but can I say something else about these wash pots they became viable nobody even mentioned those wash pots or even knew they were there but Jesus did yeah. and then Jesus made them viable those things that nobody cared about Jesus made them viable you say what are you saying preacher he did an inward work on those wash pots. He had them pour in filthy water, and out of it came the best wine. You say, what happened? He did an inward work, but it didn't stay there. Can I say, it impacted everyone that was there. And can I say, if Jesus has ever put something in you, at some point in time, he's going to pull something out of you, and it's going to impact somebody else. You say, well, I don't have the talent to sing. I don't have the gift to teach. I've never been called to preach. Uh, what can I do? Neighbor, whatever he's put in you, just let him work it through you. That's what Paul meant when he said, work out your own salvation. Huh? He didn't say work to be saved. Uh, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll get saved. Uh, but what he did say uh, is that which God's put in you, let it work out through you. Some people have the gift of gab. Well, just tell people about Jesus. Hmm? Say, so, well, I don't know all the Bible. Well, just tell them what he did for you. Yeah. Uh, you think these wash pots knew much about the Bible? All they knew was to hold water. And when somebody reached in to get the water out, it did something miraculous. It changed. And it impacted everybody else. You'd be amazed at how your life impacts other people. Just shining for Jesus. Huh? Jesus told us to be 
lights to this whole world. He said, a, a city set on a hill cannot be hid. He huh? said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Just shine. And he told them to be the salt of the earth. Huh? Uh, uh, the salt had not lost its savor. Huh? Uh, listen, uh, just be light. Just be salt. Just, just go around and smile. People think you're up to something. Huh? Did you ever look at people? There are not a lot of happy people in this world. Amen. Now, Brother Eddie, don't lie to me. I didn't say there wasn't a lot of handsome people. Huh? I said there ain't a lot of happy people. Huh? I just want to clarify that because you go out here telling everybody, I said everybody's ugly. Because I know you. <laughs> Y'all know I flew out to Denver on Thursday and flew back on Friday. I was in, where's Jeff? You ever been to Denver's airport? Huge. And chaotic. They're doing a lot of construction in that thing, and the signs do not match what they do. I'm thinking, if I go to baggage claim, I'll find the exit. I'd ask three security guards where the exit was. Huh? I don't think they knew. So they go down two floors. I'm thinking, well, I'm looking out, and out there is where the cars are. Why do I want to go down the basement? Huh? But listen, I was, right, I was in these airports. I was in Atlanta, I was in Denver. Pray for me, huh? Tomorrow I'm flying to Miami and then Grenada. Pray for me. Anyway, you say, what are you saying? I look at people. Not a lot of happy people. You know why they're not happy? Because they don't know the Lord. Amen. The Lord's the, you know, He gives us the joy of salvation. Yeah, sure. yeah. So if you just go around and smile, you'll impact somebody. Huh? It's like that old experiment. Did you ever just see where somebody's standing on a street corner, busy street corner in a big city, and just looks up? Just stand there and look up. All of a sudden, people come around and say, what are you looking at? Before long, you got a whole crowd, and then somebody will say, oh, I see it. If you smile, it becomes contagious. People want to know what you're smiling about. And they'll smile back at you. But if you, I told you she's a pterodactyl. No warning. Boom. Huh? Now watch. Fine. Huh? That's her. That's the only time you hear a peep out of her. Well, she's hungry. You better have her ready. But listen, if you smile at people, they might just ask you, what are you so happy about? Well, you can't be happy about the weather. You can't be, because I mean, the weather may lie to you. You can't be happy about the news. Huh? You can't be happy about anything else going on in this world. So what are you so happy? Well, let me tell you why I'm happy. Because I know Jesus. And he changed my life. You say, what happened? Well, they'll probably walk on past you, but you know what? They'll never get away from the fact they saw somebody that was happy and asked them why they was happy and it was about Jesus. You never know. The next happy person they might run into might tell them something similar. And you never know. The next person they run into, might, they might ask them and say, well, how did you get to know Jesus? So I'm glad you asked me. Yeah. And open the Bible and begin to show them what the Bible says. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, and he might show them where Jesus said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Uh, and he might show them uh, 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 there's none righteous, no, not one. Uh, he might show them that uh, we're all sinners. Uh, might show them that Jesus loved us while we were yet sinners. Uh, and just tell them the plan of salvation. Uh, get down there to Romans 10, 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, notice what it says down there in verse number uh, 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 thir uh, verse 11. This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Canaan of Galilee uh, and manifested forth his glory. Now look right here. And his disciples believed in him. Is that what the Bible says? No. Can I say the devils believe in him? They fear and tremble. Can I say Discovery Channel believes in him? They just tell you he was a great Bible teacher or a great prophet. 
It's not enough to believe in Jesus. Not enough to believe he was born in a manger, born of a virgin. Not enough to believe he died on a cross. Not enough to believe that he uh, uh, got up from the grave. Uh, you got to believe on him. What does that mean? Uh, that means you turn from your lifestyle uh, and you turn to him uh, and you call upon him and you put your faith in him uh, and you accept him as your Lord and Savior and your only means of salvation. It's different to believe on him than to believe in him. You see, they, they hung out with him until he did that first miracle. Then they believed on him. And I say, you never know what Jesus can do in your life. But I do promise you this. He will use you to impact somebody else's life. And there's nothing greater in this life than knowing God used you. Just a wash pot. Because you were there to impact somebody else's life. Nothing greater than that, than to know that the great God of glory who loved you when you was unlovable, even though he's loved you with everlasting love, you yourself wasn't worth two, two cents. You wasn't worth the powder to take the blow away. But he loved you. He came to where you was, changed your life and filled you. And now he uses you to impact somebody else. What a God. So let me ask you this question. And there you were. Can you go to a place where you met the Lord? If you can't, tonight might be your place. Hmm. Say, preacher, I know that I'm saved. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt I'm saved. Hallelujah. What has God done in your life? How are you impacting somebody else's life? Friend, you can look around this world and know it's not getting better. It's getting worse. The Bible says this, No, also in the last days perilous times shall come. This thing's winding down. Amen. The Lord's about ready to come after His church. Sure. If we're ever going to do something for Jesus, we need to do it now. I said, Preacher, why are you going to Grenada? Physically, I really don't feel like it. But I'm going to Grenada because just maybe God might use this old boy to change somebody's life down there. Amen. Huh? And if I go down there and Brother Jeremy Scott says, Preacher, I really feel like preaching. You just go sit in the corner. I'll sit in the corner and pray for him the whole time he's preaching that God will use him to change somebody's life. You say, Preacher, why, why do you go? Because we're running out of time. And we need to do all we can while we can because there's wash pots sitting around everywhere. You say, well, I never see them. That's the, that's the problem. We don't notice them, but Jesus does. And he's looking for some that he can use to tell other washpots about the master. If you don't know him tonight, we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. Say, so, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. We'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. You can be saved tonight. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saved, but you're just not living the life you should be. Well, we're going to give you an opportunity to get, get that made right. Maybe you're here and you're living as close to God as anybody in this building, but you just want to come and tell him you love him. Or come and thank him that he came by where you was. Because them wash pots couldn't have helped anybody outside the Lord. And can I help you something? You never got saved outside the Lord. Maybe you want to come and thank him for what he's done in your life. I don't know your heart, but I know this. Jesus is wonderful. And I'm sure glad that he came by my place that night I needed to get saved. I was just there, but I'm glad he was too. Do you know him? You can tonight. Let's all stand. Brother Rafe, you'll come get a song of invitation. While they're coming and picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Lord, just a little simple story in the Bible, but it was your first miracle. God, how you chose to use a wash pot like nobody ever had before and like nobody ever has since. Lord, I'm thankful that you've chosen just old wash pots, old filthy sinners to change their lives and impact other people's lives. Thank you for that day that you came by where I was. You saved me and changed my life. But Lord, I certainly hope that everybody here tonight is saved. But Lord, if by chance there's somebody here tonight not saved, I pray tonight would be the night of their salvation. God, I pray for those that might be saved, but Lord, they're just not being good, good wash pots for the Lord. They're just not being used of God. I pray tonight that would change. 
We certainly pray for the choicest vessel here tonight, that God, you'd continue to bless them and help them. Bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts and glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.